Many blessings, friends. Welcome to House 633. Pastor Halton here. It is such an honor to be able to be with you guys once again. And I am here joined today with my brother Noe and brother Andy. Just say hello to the audience, guys. How you doing, guys? Noe here. Hope uh, you guys are having a blessed day and you're tuning into this session. And I hope that it's a, it's a fulfilling session that you can take home and take to your, uh, to your world. Amen. God bless you guys. I'm Andy here. Thank you guys for joining us on this uh, Wednesday night. Uh, we just pray that this conversation blesses you guys. Um, we honestly do try our best to just have like a genuine raw conversation, um, which we usually do. Um, it blesses our lives. So we just pray that it blesses you guys and that you're able to just, uh, yeah, just capture what God wants to speak to us today. Amen. So like Wednesday, we have dedicated it to just have like, uh, try to do like raw conversations, but we can just... Uh, not necessarily teach, but just having conversations about topics that are affecting just uh, everybody. And today we're continuing on It's Complicated. Uh, this is our third week talking about this whole thing. Uh, but today I want to give it a, a different twist because uh, I have noticed that everybody's looking for the kingdom. Everybody, everything that everybody needs and everything that everybody is looking for is inside of the kingdom, but it's complicated. Right. You know, even though the Bible says that the kingdom of God is accessible, that it's available and, and that anybody can enter it, uh, we find uh, uh, that people have a hard time coming into the kingdom. And like I said, today we don't want to come here and necessarily just uh, teach about it. We just want to have a conversation as to why it's so complicated to enter this realm of the kingdom when it's accessible, it's available, you can enter it. Everything that we're looking for is there. And, and I'm just looking for uh, just to be able to open this up and maybe the people that are, that are out there listening uh, might be able to identify with us and be able to say like, hey, you know what, I am looking for the kingdom. I do want the kingdom. Right. Everything that's in there is everything that, I, that, I'm, that I've been looking for and that I need, but all of these things keep me from entering it. And I just want to talk about those things, like, uh, like for example, for me, I'll, I'll start with me, and I'll go down the line, and you guys kind of like, kind of share so that everybody can kind of go into it. When when I came into the kingdom, I knew that I was looking for it, but I didn't know it was the kingdom. Right. So so I, I I came to Christ in 1999, and you know I started reading the Bible, and I and I bumped into all these parables. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like the, the, the farm, you know, it's like the farmer that went out and threw out the seed, some landed on, on rocky soil, others by the way, others by the thorns, the other ones landed on fertile soil. Uh, the, the kingdom of God is, is like a measure of, of you know, flour and a flour yeast. and yeast. And, and you see all these parables and I never understood them. Like I read them and I read them and, and, and this word just kept, kept on sticking out to me. It was the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. You know, even when Jesus came into... Um, uh, you know, to, to begin his ministry, he says, repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. And, and I knew there was something there. I just couldn't grasp it. I right. couldn't understand it. I didn't know. Under, I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if, if that was kind of like your guys' uh, experience, but I, I'm talking about mine. Mine was kind of like that. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, just to add to what um, you're saying, I think my experience was basically the same thing. Uh, we go through life, I mean, just so you guys know, I mean, I was basically born in Christianity, you know, my parents, I've uh, been going to church the past 25 years of my life, um, but yeah, you, you know you're looking for something else, you just don't know what it is. So, like, for example, me, uh, what, what I'll say is I started serving at a very young age, and there was fulfillment in it, it was awesome to be able to play and be part of the worship team, but there was always just something more something that I was looking for, but like you said, I didn't know it was the kingdom. Right. And I think for a long time, um, sw switching churches, even that was me trying to, I knew I needed to grow and I knew I wanted more, which is why I made the, the, the switch to go to another church. And then I grew in that church, but it still wasn't enough until that message of the kingdom, I heard it. I didn't understand it or really, yeah, just understand it, but I knew that's, that's what I was looking for. So I think with people, if they can they will relate there, yeah, especially people that are years in Christianity, uh, we're looking for something, but we don't know what it is. And I think that's a problem that we just don't know that it's the kingdom, and we don't know what the kingdom has to offer, to, to put in those words, so therefore we don't look after it. Right. Well, there's something that, as you guys are talking, and that, that, I, that captures my attention. You said there was parables and parables, and I started looking at them, and I was curious to know why Jesus talked about kingdom and kingdom and kingdom right. and the first thing you did is start to seek yeah what what is that 
That's another thing that you said is the same thing. I know there was something missing, so I started to seek. So that brings me to where I came in, because it was it was exactly the same thing. And I think the key here is seeking it. Right. And then Jesus Himself says it, right? In, in Matthew six thirty three. And for me, it's the same thing. I started going to church after. I mean, I was born in a Christian home as well, but I always say it, I didn't know Jesus until I was thirty years old, right. because I was involved more in the motions of the church. Right. More than seeking who Je who really Jesus was. Jesus. Right. So when I came into the to, to church and I started hearing uh, your messages, they captivated me because I always used to pray to God all the time. And that's the thing about a lot of us is we don't pray enough mm -hmm. to God to to for, to to seek those things, right? right? And I used to pray to God, and my my, my, my wife is actually a witness to this. And I used to pray to God and said, Lord, I don't want religion between me and you. Right. I want you. Show me you. And that was my prayer when I started going to church. Until one day, it was like, boom. Right. You came in, you started preaching, and I was like, that's it. Yeah. That's what I was seeking. That's what I've been asking. Right. And then you start getting a revelation of it, and you start understanding it. Right. And then you start saying, okay, this is what I was right. seeking for. Mm -hmm. That is powerful because I think that that's all we come in. And and and. It, and and it's crazy because you know when we talk uh, when we talk about the kingdom, for example, like I said, we don't even know that that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I was born also into a Christian home. Uh, I wasn't a practicing Christian until about, like I said, uh, 1999. Uh, and when I started reading the Bible and I started going into this message, you know, uh, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, and this this resonated with me. But I but I spent about six seven years in Christianity. Uh, and you know, I didn't discover fully the kingdom or wasn't revealed to me until like 2007. So I spent six years in this journey searching. I knew that there was something more. I just didn't know what it was. I didn't even have a name for it. Uh, you know, I would go and, and, and I didn't even know I was in religion. That's another thing. Right. That because when you come into Christianity, uh, Christianity, you never think that Christianity is a religion. Right. You believe Christianity is the truth and right. you believe that Christianity is everything, you know, because the only thing that you have to do is basically just come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and basically you're set, you're set for eternity. Yeah. There's nothing else that you have to do. So you come into Christianity, and I remember doing that uh, that prayer of faith. You know, we all gone gone through this prayer. Uh, you know, you have to recognize that you're a sinner. You have to recognize that you've fallen short of the glory of God, and you have to come and you have to ask God for forgiveness of your sins. And you have to accept them as your Lord and Savior. But then after that, you're like, now what? You kind of, I spent like six years in, in, in that kind of like a mindset of like, what now? What, what do I do? And, and the only thing that I kept on hearing was uh, just wait for Christ to come back. You know, wait for the rapture, wait for the trumpet, wait for, uh, just wait for Christ and just don't get involved with the world. Don't contaminate yourself. Uh, you know, don't let people touch you because they're gonna, their spirits are gonna right. jump into you, and all of these things. And, and, and you're like, you know what? Um, I thought that coming into Christ was gonna be the most fulfilling thing, but even when I accepted Christ, I felt empty. Right. And, and I didn't understand why. If if the only thing that I was missing was Christ. Correct. Right. I, I think that's the uh, where I came in as well because. We, once we come into Christianity and we come into to Christ, we want to go and we want to go full on to doing what God has called us to do. Right. But the problem is the models that are already placed in the religious church yes. that we're following. Because the models are the ones that already have a, a religious mindset and don't have the true meaning of the parables and the kingdom of God. So when we come in, we're vulnerable to somebody that's already been there for 30 years and they come and they tell you this is how you do it right. and you follow because you think man you've been here for 30 years you must know what you're talking you, about, you must know what you're talking about. Right. but this guy that just came in here telling me that that's not right i'm not i'm not gonna listen to that guy i'm gonna listen right. to the 30 year old guy that's here right yeah and then even i made the thing that, that you were saying which i can say that was kind of my story too is that you just you, you just never think that christianity isn't it Right. So, so, you, so you grow up and, and you just take everything for what it is, uh, whatever your pastors are preaching, um, you, you take it, you never really try to really dissect or look for anything else because you don't think that there's anything else. 
Right. Um, so part of that is, is what you were saying is like, you just never really thought that there was anything else besides Christianity. Right. But really what you're looking for is the, is the kingdom. So there is something further than that. Right. And, and they basically, they, they sell you the kingdom for Christianity. Right. So they, really, they tell you that if, as soon as you, if you become a Christian, you're, you're already in the kingdom. And then you kind of find out 30 years later, 20 years <laughs> later, 15 years later, whatever exactly. amount of time that you've been there. Uh, like for me, like I said, it took me six years. I already knew that there was something not right. Uh, but there was nothing else that I can go to. So right. I stayed within Christianity, within the, 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 the realm of it, because there was nothing else. I just didn't know where to go or what else to do. So I stayed within it, but like you were saying, the models were not models yeah. at all. Yeah. But they were the ones that were at the gate, meaning they yes. were the ones that, that were sitting in, in the in seats the of, of, of authority, of yes. power. Uh, they were the teachers, and, and, and this is the move of God. This is how God moves, this is, this is how God works, this is how God does stuff, and anything outside of this is not God. So, you know, it kind of forces you to stay there because if you venture just a little bit out, they make you feel... Or, or, you're the outcast. Or, you're the outcast, or now you have abandoned the faith, which yeah. is not the case. It, it is basically, you're, you're in a journey of seeking. Yeah. So I was seeking out, I'm seeking after God, I love God. You know, I want more of God, I want to experience God more, I want to know more about Jesus Christ. But I want to understand Jesus Christ more than I just want to simply just be a, 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 a be refuge under Him. Yeah. Right. You know, because that's basically my understanding or my experience with Christianity uh, was mostly a place where I would just hide under Christ, and and and, and I couldn't venture anywhere out because if I, because if I if I was to go anywhere outside of Christ, not that you ever do in the kingdom either, because the kingdom. Christ feels it all, right. you know? So it's not like you're leaving Christ when you enter the kingdom. It's, it's you're entering the place that, that, that Christ opened up for right. you. That he, which, died for. that he died for, which is different. But like I said, I, I, I was more like, I want peace. Yeah. I want joy. I, I want self-control. I want uh, all of these things that Christianity promises. But they kept on shutting the door at me. And I think that that's the best way for me to put it. They kept on shutting the door because they kept on telling me that I couldn't achieve it because sin was in my body. Right, I yeah. couldn't achieve it because I was living in the flesh. I couldn't achieve it simply because I was still in the world. And I'm like, but it makes no sense to me. Right. I, I feel in my spirit that, that there is more uh, that I can achieve and do. And there is more ways that I can uh, glorify God than, than just, uh, how would I put it? It's, than just feeling worthless. Right. And just feeling like I'm useless to God, or just feeling like I just have to suck it up, right. <laughs> and I just have to like, you know what? I, I just have to stay here because, of, like you were telling me earlier, as long as I make it into eternity, even if it's just ooh, by the hair, you know, of, of your I'm skin, good. I'm good. I, I, I so, mean. so people have no intention of living a holy life. Mm. People have no intention of, of being righteous. People have no intention of doing what's right before God. The only thing that they care about is uh, one day just at least making it to eternity. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, it, to me, it made no sense. Yeah. It, it, it just made the whole, the, this whole Christian concept to me, uh, it, it just made it just that more, more complicated and difficult for me to be able to enter the kingdom. So I don't know, you know, tell me. That's good. Uh, do you want to go? No, okay, so as you're talking, the, well, what I'm thinking of is just like, uh, th this might not sit right with a lot of people, and it's fine, mm -hmm. um, but the thing about Christianity, at the end of the day, it's, it's a religion, no matter how, how, how much we try to convince ourselves that it's not a religion, it has become a religion. Well, they've so, been changing it through the, through the decades, you know, it started like, you know, religion, and then when, when they started tagging Christianity as a religion, religion, then they changed the tag to it's a relationship. Right. Yeah. And, and then from that, they changed the tag to something, because you're always trying to separate yourself from religion, right. but if, if, if you have to separate yourself from it, it's because you're somehow you're connected. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's what I was thinking, like, at, at the end of the day, Christianity is a religion, and the, the thing about now is the uh, same parallel that we see with, like, Jesus and the Pharisees. Like, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, they were the teachers of the law. They were the ones that were put in the position of teaching the, the, the crowds, the congregations, and their disciples, so everybody thought that what they were teaching was right, because they were teaching the Bible. 
So, so we have Christianity and preachers that preach the Bible, preach things. So not that it's wrong, but they didn't know that it wasn't right. So now it takes Jesus coming into the scene and he just comes and just completely like obliterates the religious system. And people were finally able to see like, okay, Jesus is preaching this, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were teaching this. So uh, what you said earlier is like, they didn't know that they were being taught the wrong things. What you just said was so good because Christianity, the same way that the Pharisees did, was they didn't let people enter the kingdom right. and they didn't want to enter it themselves. Right. They were happy where they were at. Right, exactly. So it took Jesus to come and expose them and show them, hey, like, religion was good and even the word says that, but it was just a guide. It was just, um, uh, um, I mean, what's that word? It, it, um, it's a guardian. A guardian, there you go. Yeah, to teach you and then to kind of just like, help you grow along the way but then jesus came and he said that he's the the way the truth and the life and he came to bring that kingdom that government so now in the same way now in our time like the kingdom is being preached now because there has to be a distinction in christianity now right. people need to realize like oh shoot like i have been in a religion even though what i've been taught has been good but now now there, there's this uh, message that is being brought back into to light. That's the actual real message, the right message that Jesus came to bring. So, so yeah, so, so to just that, like, if the light doesn't expose the darkness, then the darkness that you're in, you're going to think it's light. Hey, man. So um, I have this thing, and you mentioned something about, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the old times. Well, I think we still have that in place because... One example I've given you earlier, I told you that I'm looking for a yard for my construction trucks and everything, right? So I'm going around all these neighborhoods, uh, industrial places and uh, avenues. And, and, and I, oh, what I want, one thing that I saw in Vermont, the 105 freeway going down south, every two blocks has Christian church. And as you're driving around, this is one sect, this is another one, but they're all called themselves Jesus Christ, the house of Jesus Christ. But then if you see, I probably saw 30 of them within a mile, just going from left to right. But then I see, what is it that makes them all different? What is the mentality in each church that makes them different that we cannot unite it, right? And that's where we come in. And I even, to be honest, talk to myself and I'm like, am I one of those also that we have our own mentality? Or are we the ones that actually are seeking for Jesus mentality, Jesus teachings. You know, I always I always fight with myself. That's one thing that I do, and I, I gotta be honest. I fight with myself what I believe on, so that I can make sure that I am concrete in on the truth. Right. And every time I fight it, and every time I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is wrong. I'm gonna fight it, and I come back to the conclusion, no, but this is this is this is it. Right. You know, I used to do that when I used to go to church, and I start and I, I met you, and I started talking to you about you know the word. And we started com having conversations over dinner and stuff. I used to be, you, you, you got to admit, I used to fight this guy. And I used to fight him with my belief system. Why? Because one thing that I had, and I, I was taught, and I had to get rid of it myself was, hey, who are you that are, is not up there preaching, telling me that I'm wrong, but between me and my pastor or me and my leader, which is 30 years here, he's right. What makes you think that you're credible on what you're telling me? Because he's telling me, I can't get no other word in, some, in, in another church. You got to get it from the leader that's in this house. And I've heard that so many times. Like, hey, where are you getting your word from? If he's not from your church, you're alleviating from the vision. Yeah, right. Because yeah, you're yeah. listening to another preacher that's back east or whatever right so one thing that i had to fight with myself was am i fighting against the kingdom of god for a religion or am i fighting myself from here to enter there and that was that was my take that's how i started pursuing the kingdom of god acknowledging that man this is the right stuff because the first thing i did was fought with it and I said, God, teach me, but I'm still fighting with it. And I, show me, but I'm still fighting with it. And I think those are mental uh, strongholds that I had since I was a child. I love my mother. I love my father. I was born in Christianity. But they knew more than I did. All I did was follow the system. Right. And one thing is following the system and then following the truth. Right. 
I've been in companies that I used to be an employee. I didn't like the system. That doesn't mean that I didn't like the landscape work. Right. Right. I love the work. I love doing that every day. But I didn't like the system that was involved in how it. How they operated. How they operated it. So I had to get away from that company and go to a different company to work. The problem wasn't what I was doing. It was the system that I was involved. And that's how I felt in religion. If there is a system that's inside of this religion, in this church, or these sects, whatever, that I, didn't, I was opposing myself to know the truth because I was too involved mentally on this system. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's very good, very powerful, because that, that's exactly what it is. Because religion is a system. Yeah. So it doesn't matter which church you go to sometimes, the system is the same. And, and it's not that you don't love God. We all love God. I haven't met anybody that has ever told me I hate yeah. God. Right. There are, of course, obsession of, of exceptions of people that don't like God, but I'm, I'm talking generally speaking, even the people in the world, the people that don't congregate in, in churches, they tell you, I love God. Me and God are good. I, I try to do what's best for God. What they're telling you is, I don't like the system of the church. I don't like the religion. I don't like this aspect. And, and all of us that, that are somehow, some way, uh, form part of the church itself, uh, what, what we uh, don't like is not God. It's not the kingdom. We don't have a problem with the kingdom. We have a problem with the system. Uh, the way that the system operates. Because when we see, like for example, Jesus Christ, when he came back to earth, he came in, in, and he gave a different interpretation. And, and that's what really changed my whole view of how I read the Bible. Mm. Because I would read the Bible through the lens of religion, right. uh, theology, philosophy, or whatever it is that my church had given me. And like you were saying, we didn't question it. We we're we're the newbies. Right. You know, we just got in. We we're being taught by somebody that's been here twenty years, twenty five years, thirty years of ministry. Right. This guy knows what he's doing. He's teaching me. So you know, if, if there is a difference of opinion, I must be wrong <laughs> because this guy is right. yeah. this guy's been around. But then you really then you look at the lives of these people, and then you realize, hey, mm. you know what? They they're giving me good information. Because right. that's what Jesus says. You know what? These the Sadducees and the Pharisees they see they, they they are seated in the in the throne of Moses or in the seat of Moses or or, or or in the place of authority and they're teaching you the law. There is nothing wrong with the law. The right. law was given by God. The problem is the people that are giving it to you. Mm -hmm. They give you uh, they they put on you weight that you know that you can't carry they and they don't carry. and they can't even carry it and they don't even lift up a finger to help you carry yours okay. meaning that they're they're not um, good models for it so when when i was like i said when i was coming in into christianity i'm like yeah i had all these people they had they had the word of god the word of god does not change what right. changed was the interpretation yes. because the pharisees and the sadducees had one interpretation and jesus had another interpretation right. and, and and that's what exposed what the religious system had become versus what the word of god truly yes. is yeah. because he even said you know what in you, you have heard it said do not commit adultery but I say to you, if you even think about it, right. you have already committed adultery. So there was a, a, a system in place that right. taught you that was totally different from the system or the government of God. Right. And, and, and that's, that's where I think we had, we had the problem. I had the problem because I kept on reading, reading in the Bible and, and the government of God kept on like like poking his face at me right. I didn't know what it was but it just like man this makes so much sense but I would go back to my leaders and I'll go back to my pastor and I'll go back to all these people and they would tell me no 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 it's not like that but I'm like but it keeps on sticking out to me mm -hmm. but what do you mean that, that that you can continue being a liar or a fornicator you can continue being yeah. a fornicator uh, you, you can continue you know doing being a thief right. and being and be a Christian at the same time yeah. right. it didn't make sense to me there was there was uh once one 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 time at church that uh we were talking about the fruit of the spirits right, right? and it was between a small group we were right. talking about the fruit of the spirit how do you serve how do you do i'm like man this is so good i, I want to learn more about it right mm -hmm. at that time i was going uh through a tough time with the struggle that i was having and it was sin oh, i gotta be honest with you it was a sinful um struggle and i'm like no i have to beat this down and i used to like Say, oh well, the devil. The devil's making me do this. The devil is yeah. it's, it, it's it's attacking me because I'm serving at church, right. and now I have to like you know attack back right. and attack back, fight right? Back. Fight back. So um, 
I, it was it was it was uh, something that I was struggling with, and I went to a leader and I told him, hey, look, and I went straight up because I'm I'm a straight up guy. I told him, hey, look, I'm I'm dealing with this, yeah. and this is what's happening. What do I do? This leader told me, oh, who hasn't? We all go through it, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. Well, I'm good. <sighs> That's so great. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not alone in this, right? But then I came to you, and I brought you the same scenario. Yeah. And I said, man, I gotta talk to you because, you know, te tengo confianza. You know, I, I, I see like I can I can talk to you. This is something that's private, and I'm gonna talk to you. I want you to see. I want to take. I want to have your take on it because we already were talking about it. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that he said was, you have a character issue, and you need to rectify it. So you need to find out a way to do it because that's not okay. I felt like somebody slapped me on the hands, like, stop, stop it. Yeah. Right. And then I'm like, so who's right? right? Is it the leader that's been there for years that's right? Or is it the person that has, doesn't even serve at church that's right? That's the battle that I was coming through. And I started like, okay, well, who's right then? And then I started seeing the models, yeah. the systems. Grace covers it. Love covers it. And I started seeing, no, there's a problem that I need to change and I need to excavate, heal it, and move on. Religion didn't teach me that. The system didn't teach me that. But the Bible and good, a good mentor teaches you that. Yeah. That's where I started coming into here because I needed a change and not feel frustrated every time I go to church and say, Lord, I'm back again. Sorry. Because that's what I used to do and I wasn't used to. Yeah. And I used to walk out, whew, another week. Well, that's what the system teaches you know what you come to church just to recharge right. and you come to church so that you can kind of like go through the week yeah. you know and, and if you fall during that week thank God for the weekend because Sunday's coming and you can come right. back to God and just lay yourself out there for God and, 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 and that, that's the practice of millions and millions and millions of people as we speak yeah. and, 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 and this was my frustration because I would read the, that the Bible was totally contrary to that. I was reading in the Bible that even though we are all sinners and we all have fallen short of the glory of God, God uh, did die on the cross and he finished it all so that we would no longer have to struggle. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit in us can no longer uh, cause us to be falling and backsliding and, and living these lives uh, that we were living. So I was reading it in the Bible and everybody was telling me no. I would argue with people, and I'm not saying argue, I would just go back and forth because like I said, I'm, I'm just a guy that is just coming into, into this, but I'm reading my Bible, and, and I'm reading the Bible, and, I, and it's totally contrary to what I'm hearing, right. so I'm bringing it up to people, I'm like, okay, either the person that is speaking is wrong, or I am wrong, I want to know who's wrong, I'm not here to challenge anybody, if I'm wrong, I want to change because I love God, right. if I am wrong, I, I, I need to be able to, to be corrected, so I would never bring these things up to people because I wanted to say that you're wrong, I wanted to know if I was wrong, I didn't care if they were wrong. Yeah. I wouldn't know if I was wrong. So if I was wrong, I better just cut it out. I better just leave this behind and I better get in line. <laughs> and I better just, you know, keep on following what everybody else is following. But the answers that they would give me just wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't sit in my spirit. And, and, and I would go back to the Bible and I'm like, man, Lord, this gives me so much peace and this gives me so much joy and it gives me so, uh, it, it, just, it just allows me to sustain myself uh, outside of the realm of sin. By, by practicing, you know, the, the principles that I was learning from the kingdom, but people would want to bring me back into religion. I'm like, no, I can't participate of that because I look at your life and your life doesn't make sense to me. Right. I, I don't judge you as a person, but but if, imagine buying a product that is failing just because everybody else is buying it. Right. You're like, no, I don't want to buy it. I, I want to buy something that works. Right. So if I'm going to give myself to something, I, I want to give myself to something that can be proven that works, right. not something that can be proven that is going to work when I die. So Christianity was giving me the guarantee of perfection or maturity uh, once I was dead. Right. But the kingdom was giving it to me while I was alive yeah, here yeah. on the earth. Yeah. So I, the kingdom really stuck out to me because I wanted to live out a godly life here on the earth right. now. Not when I was dead. Yeah. What, 
Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that that's so funny because uh, I mean, hey, when I was small too, uh, I didn't see God as much as I do now. But the same thing, there were Bible verses that didn't make sense. Like I, I remember, um, I would ask like my parents and just like my leaders at the time. I'm like, the Bible says that like uh, cheaters, liars, thieves, adulterers, fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Like. Like, I'm like, we're all that. Like, we do all those things. So what do you mean? Like, they won't inherit it. And then, like, they, they try to explain it. But then my thing it was, was always like, so you're basically saying that we can live our lives however the heck we want. And the second before we die, we say, Lord, I'm sorry, please say, forgive me. Let me get in heaven and we're going to be good. Like, it just, like, it never made sense how, again, like, how we, easy that could be. Yeah, about. because if that was the case to me as a kid, I was just like, then why do we even come to church? Like, why do we try to be so good and live right and do all these things if at the if we can just live our lives however we want and at the end of the day, it's a, for forgiveness. Right, a second before we die, we ask for forgiveness and we're going to be good. And it just didn't make sense, sense to me as a kid. Yeah. One thing that you were saying about, um, what was it, in the corporate world? Or what was it that, about, I totally lost it. But the systems, the systems mm-hmm. no, the, the product, you don't want to buy a product yeah. that's fading, right? Right. One thing that um, I've learned through uh, retail stores and through business, on anything that you invest, they tell they you always want to ask as the purchaser, or you also uh, want to ask what is my return on this investment, right. right? So we talk about the the Christianity movement or the the religious movement in any sect, whether it's Mormons, whether it's Jehovah's Witness, whether it's all of these things, right. is what is the return on investment? Because we're investing, like right now, we're investing our time. We invest our time when we come and worship. We're investing our time when we come and listen to the word. So I, in within, what, let's say 30, I'm already almost 40, right? Mm-hmm. From 1 to 30, my return investment on going to church and going with the, the flow, with the flow the didn't give me a return mm-hmm. on all of that time that I invested in it. Because I was just following a religion, right? Right. Right? But then I met Jesus until I was 30 and I started researching and I started getting involved and seeking. Once again, the word is very, very important. The word is seeking. And and then I started going at it where I wanted to know more about it, seeking more about it. That's when my, my investment was coming in faster. Why? Because I was investing in something that was correct and that was right. And then I st- started seeing in my life, like you said, not in heaven, but here on earth, I started seeing that investment coming back ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because I was applying those principles right. as I learned them. This, I'm taking it home and I'm keeping it. This, I'm taking it home and I'm keeping it. But sometimes we come in and there's so many religious duties that you just don't take home. You just do at church. Right. And then you yeah. just go back. And you continue for years without receiving an investment, right. a, 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 a return on what you invested. You, you're actually negative because you've been pouring so much, you've been serving so, so much that you're actually like negative now. That's why people feel so drained. Right. You know, right. They, they, they go, to, they go they to church out of obligation so yeah. and, and they get drained. Instead of getting filled up, they're drained because they're, 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 they're just uh, going through this motion of like, this is how you serve God. Right. So if, 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 if I want to please God, I got to come and, and be part of the worship. I got to be part of the usher team. I got to be part of the kids ministry. I got to be part of whatever yeah. whatever place that is open. I just got to plug myself in yeah. to any of these places because I got to serve God. And instead of serving God, you get drained. Yes. And, and, and instead of receiving and, and coming closer to God, you, you grow in resentment yeah. with yeah. time. Because it takes you away from your wife. It takes you away from your kids. It takes you away from going to the clubs, to the bars, <laughs> from the girlfriend, from all of this. For what? For what? Because that's what you ask after five or six years. Why did I spend the last five, six years here? And this is this is what oh, what kind of like bothers me, and, and 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 this is why I don't like religion, and that's why I, I I'm so passionate about the kingdom. I've seen kids grow up in church from the age of ten years old. They reach 16, 17, and now you see them on Instagram, mm. uh, uh, just showing how much they're drinking, how much they're smoking, right. how they're going to the clubs. Why? Because they got drained at church right. because they because it wasn't the kingdom. 
It yeah. wasn't the real thing. They right. went to church because they loved God. They went to church because uh, their parents took them to church. But the minute that they found it out, they left it. Yeah. Why? Because they weren't receiving anything. Right. They were just giving something that they, they didn't want. And they knew it didn't work. Yeah. Because they, they already see other people in church been practicing it for years, sucking it up, and it doesn't work for them either. Right. So, so that's, that's a question for you guys. Because I know I've experienced it. His experiences, you're experiencing yeah. it and have experienced it. And that's a question that you all might have. How long have you been at a, at a church? I don't know what church it would be, but what is your return on investment been? Yeah. Because if you have not seen fruits of the spirit yeah. involved and you don't see it at church, you don't see it in your character, you don't see it in your finances, you don't see it in your health, you don't see it in all these add-ons that Jesus says, seek for the kingdom of God and all these add-ons are going to be added on to you. Right. If you don't see add-ons, there's something wrong that you got to check yourself. Yeah, this it's is so good. And Noah started this effect. And the reason I'm laughing is because it's so true. Yeah. So part of, I guess, my testimony, or call it love me, whatever you want. But me, uh, I mean, when I was young, uh, at the church I was there at the time, um, there was kind of a lack of musicians. So me, because I was like, I mean, I love playing, I love serving. So I would literally play almost every service, whether it was Thursdays, Fridays, all day Sundays, we had three services. I would play them all. Like, I didn't care. I was, I was young. I was energetic. Like, I didn't care. You were serving the Lord. Right, exactly. <laughs> but this went on for years. And then it got to the point where, like you said, like, I was just so drained. I was frustrated because I wasn't seeing any return. So um, I would talk to people and I'm like, dude, like, the church doesn't pay me, but then they tell me that I'm gonna get my reward in heaven, and I was just like, I get it now, right? I was like, I need to see a return now. Like, like serving is awesome, but like you guys were saying, like I was, just, I just wasn't seeing any type of a return. What a, what about the the churches that don't even let you play if you don't have the tie they they have you on the oh. checklist so not only are you there every single day as a volunteer right. you also have to pay right. to be there exactly. so that adds to yeah. the draining that is so crazy yeah. but yeah so 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 it's like we go from there and then being in the kingdom like like what is it just two years maybe three it's like how noah said there's been such a return and an instant return where it was like as soon as we started seeking and i'll say we because we kind of have the, the, the same story. But yeah, as soon as we started seeking it, like areas that we wanted or needed change in our lives, they started changing. They like, opened up. Like, what do you know? As soon as, like, yeah, as soon as you start applying these principles and start seeking and start doing what the Bible tells you and what our pastor and, and mentor tells you, your life starts to change. Like, who would have thought that? <laughs> you know? I'll be darned. I don't think so. You know, and, and, and I want to touch on something that you were you were saying because it's so true. And, and this is one of the, the biggest frustrating factors for me at, at that time when I came into the kingdom it, it's uh, having so much investment in it mm. you know spending so much time giving so much money giving so much because when you're in church they train you to tithe they train you to offer the they, 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 they train you to do all the things that benefits the church except you you know, so they don't train you how to stop sinning, but right. they train you how to give. Yeah. So they'll, you'll have, you know, seminars after seminars on how to give, but there isn't any seminar on how to stop how to sin. Right. You know, so you will be in church and they're like, keep on giving, brother. Keep on giving, brother. I'm like, dude, I'm a giver. Nobody needs to tell me to give. I'm a natural giver. I, you know, if you ask me how much money I have poured into the body of Christ, I have poured enough money into the body of Christ because I'm, I'm a natural giver. I'm a generous person. But, but I was giving simply because I was, I, I was generous, but they were just playing me also on the giving because they weren't teaching me how to, how to stop sinning. And that was right. kind of the, the frustrating thing that I'm like, you know what? I, I want God to use me, but God is never going to use me because I'm never, I keep on doing this same thing, but I keep, they keep on telling me that it's okay. Right. They keep on telling me that, that I'm on the right path. They keep on telling me not to worry about it. The, the grace of God is going to cover it, and, and, and you're safe and protected. Don't worry about it, brother. Just, everybody does that. Everybody, I'm like, no. I don't see nobody in the Bible doing right. this, but I'm doing this. There's something wrong. No, there's nothing wrong. There's something wrong. If I continue to sin, when the Holy Spirit is inside of me, there's something wrong. Right. How and, can you sin if the Holy Spirit? Yeah, and, 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 and that's why the, this, this whole concept to me, uh, it, it was so complicated 
Because I was looking for peace, I was looking for joy, I was looking for God, I did love God, but I couldn't get there because there were people in place that kept on keeping me in, yeah. in a place instead of allowing me to go into the next direction. I know I sent you a Bible verse uh, where Jesus is talking, where, where Jesus is, is condemning the Pharisees and says, Woe to you, Pharisees and Sadducees and teachers of the law, you, you, you don't allow anybody to enter the kingdom of God, you yourselves don't enter. And, and this is what was happening to me. It's like all these people, I'm looking for the kingdom. I'm trying to right. enter the kingdom of God. I'm trying to be holy. I'm trying to be righteous. I'm trying to do all this stuff. And these people keep on closing the door on me saying, no, that's impossible. You need to die. You need to leave that body so that you can finally achieve this. And I'm like, no, it doesn't make any sense. Mm. It's like, why would I want to... Why would I want to die to get to heaven so that I can be perfect or holy or consecrated to God there, when I see that Jesus had a, that same body that I have right. and he was able to live a consecrated life to God? One, one thing that comes to mind, and I don't know too much about football, mm -hmm. but this is what I imagine you. You got the ball, which was the truth. Yeah. And you're trying to score a touchdown. And all the leaders that should be on your side are the offensive trying to make you not to score a touchdown. Right, yeah. Like, if they're telling me that I'm going in the wrong direction. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then the, the crazy, funny part about uh, this, and um, what would you even call it? It's, it's not called an oxymoron, but it's called, ah, oh, what's the word? Oxymoron. Yeah. Cognitive dissonance? No, no. no it, it's, it's another word. But basically, like, the thing that happens is everything that religion is trying to do or tries it to do is found in the kingdom. Yeah. So, so, for, so, for example, religion tries to make everybody such huge givers by, like, m m manipulation, by twisting the word, uh, having all these things, prosperity, seminars, because they want you to give. Right. But if they only understood that if they preach the kingdom, the kingdom gives you so much that it makes you want to give. Yeah. Like, in the kingdom, there's no manipulation, there's no way coercion. You give out of honor. That's what it is you're taught. Yeah. Like a religion wants you to serve and like give all your life and do all these things for, for God in the church, but they do it through like a means of like manipulation and, and like we were talking about, they don't give you anything to help your personal life. Yeah. But the kingdom does the opposite. The kingdom gives you so much personally that you want to serve. Like for example, now it's like anything that you ask us to do at church, like you don't even have to ask. Like we want to do it because of everything that we've learned. The investment that we have gotten, we just automatically want to give back. You're on an overflow instead right. of being on a drainage. Right, exactly. And I, and I think that's what uh, pastors and even churches, the religious system hasn't uh, understood that. Like that, like they're trying to achieve all these things and do all these things the wrong way. Right. Where if they just got into the right revelation of the word and preached the kingdom, everything that they're wanting and seeking will just come by, uh, by, uh, like, 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 by, at, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It would just be a dang. What's the word? It would just be a byproduct. Of it. Byproduct. Yeah. yeah. You know one thing that I I, I used to fight with, with my mind before. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got to be honest with you. Kingdom. 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 When I started hearing you preach, kingdom. Kingdom. Every five words, the kingdom. <laughs> Fifteen seconds, the kingdom. And the kingdom. And I used to like, ah, oh, here they come, that brother again talking about the kingdom. The kingdom and the kingdom. Oh, the kingdom. The kingdom and the kingdom. And I used to be like, can you just change the word to something now? Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. And I used to say that to myself. Here we come again. Until God told me to say, and Jesus revealed to me through the Holy Spirit is, when I used to be in this world, that's what, all I used to talk about. Right. Oh. And when he told me that, I was like, Oh my bad. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you you kind of beat me to the punch there because I was about to ask you guys a question like, what 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 were like because we're talking about it, it's complicated, right? Because we're all looking for the kingdom, we just don't know it. Yeah. Uh, everything that we need is inside the kingdom, yet we seek it through religion, and it's like a a, a, a counterfeit. It, they, it's the promise of something that we can't achieve. Right. But the kingdom is the promise of something that is available to us now. So what like to you guys? Because we all at one point in time hear the kingdom, but don't really hear the kingdom. Right, yeah. So we hear it, we hear the like, word. We, you hear the word, the buzzword kingdom, but, real but you don't understand what the kingdom is. So you're like, ah, it's just like you were saying right now, here comes this guy talking about this kingdom, and like, ah, what, what, what's the big deal? Yeah. So what was like your guys' issue, like coming in, uh, maybe somebody that's listening to us might be able to identify. What was your guys' issue, like coming into the kingdom, like when you heard it, and then you're like, what is this stuff? 
my, my thing, when I came into the understanding of the kingdom and I started listening to a lot of preachings from Miles, mm -hmm. what I didn't like myself was that I needed to change. Mm -hmm. That was the hardest part. The responsibility. The responsibility that I put on, on me yeah. if I want to come into to this door. Right. Right. Because in, a, in the religion, you come into a cross. Right. And here at this door, in this cross, there is forgiveness. But to enter into the kingdom of God, which is passing that cross, yes. passing that door, there's a responsibility yes. to live in it. Yes. So my biggest frustration when I came in to know, to have the knowledge of behind the cross, mm -hmm. because I used to live in front of the cross. Right. When I came in behind the cross to the environment that Jesus wanted us to come in to, yeah. they needed, they, I needed to do something about it. In order for me to survive in it, in order for me to thrive in it, and that was my self-control. That was everything that I need to work on. And I used to be like that prodigal son that came in and said, "What must I do?" And Jesus said, "You have to live all of this, and you can come in with me into the kingdom of God." And that's where I came in, and I'm like, "But no, me leaving that." You know, I like that. I can't come in. They told me that I didn't have to leave it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I could just stay in front of the cross. But now you're telling me in order for me to come in, I have to change something in me. That was my biggest frustration. And I fought with it until I noticed and I saw that I needed to do that. And, and that kind of leads me to kind of like the follow-up question to that because... This is where the fight between the kingdom and Christianity really gets deep. And I have, and I have had so many, and maybe you guys have too, maybe you guys tell me. And this is where I've had so many people just kind of get into like arguments with me. Because they would tell me uh, that um, in order for us to be saved, for example, this is the argument that they would tell me. Uh, that there is nothing that you don't get saved through works. So that there is nothing that you have to do or can do to achieve salvation, which in essence is true. Salvation, there's nothing that you can do. Jesus already paid, he already, Jesus already paid the price The for reason that. there is nothing that you can do, because of exactly what you're saying, Jesus already died, he shed his blood, he already paid the price. So it is now a gift. It's not, it, salvation is not free. It got paid. So it got paid through the blood and sacrifice of Christ. But now... The, the, the people confuse salvation or the, or the gift of salvation through Christ with the actual works that prove that you've been saved. Yes. You know how I see it? Mm -hmm. I, see it as a, I see it as a wall yeah. between the world and the kingdom of God in heaven. Yeah. What Jesus did when he died on the cross, and this is how I see it. And I might be wrong, you tell me, mm -hmm. but this is how I see it. The reason that God, that Jesus had to die for us is to build that wall. To build, the wall was already built. It was for him to build the door and opened it. That was free. Right. That was free from Jesus. Right. There was a wall, now there's a door in the wall. Right. Now you can enter it in. Right. That's salvation to me. Right. I gave you the access. Yes. Then now it's up to us to enter. Right. Now, perfect analogy. Now the door is open. You have access to the kingdom. Yes. It doesn't mean that you have the kingdom automatically. It just means yes. that you have access, access to, it. to it. But now there's, here's the criteria. If right. you want to be part of the kingdom of God, if you want to inherit the kingdom, no adulterer, no fornicator, right. no Can homosexual, that door? no adulterer, no none of that. So now, through the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you can remove all of these things. He removes the sin. He fills you up with the Holy Spirit so that you can enter through the door right. and be able to stay in the kingdom and be able to experience everything that's available through the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You cannot make the things that are inside of the kingdom available to you if you're a practicing sinner. Right. Yeah. Even if you have con even if you have confessed with your lips. Now I wanna I wanna I wanna just I said I wasn't gonna teach, but I wanna teach a little bit at least on this. Because there is a difference between confession and belief. Yes. Yeah. Okay? And a lot of people confess Christ, but don't believe in Christ. Right. Yes. And the belief is, is, is the conviction of what, the, uh, what he has taught has now been cemented in your heart. Right. So now, if you believe in Christ, you're going to believe what he says. Meaning that, it, that the kingdom is available, but you got to repent. 
Repentance is to change the way that you think. You can't come into the kingdom with the old way of thinking. Do you believe it or not? Yes. And belief is always followed up by action. And it's followed up by action. So if you believe it, then you're going to change the way that you think. If you don't believe it, you're going to confess Christ, but stay in the same condition. condition yeah. So now you have all of these people, millions and billions of Christians that have confessed Christ. And you have this door here available for them to enter, but they don't believe that they, they, they can stop sinning. Right. So that's why it's hard, it's hard for a lot of people to yes. understand the kingdom concept. Yes. The kingdom principles. Yes. Because they're still outside that wall. Yes. Right. So once I, you enter, then you're like, whoa, what right. is this? And that's what we have experienced. So, okay, me and you had a, a conversation a while back, and, and you know, and, and everybody always looks at me weird when I tell them this. Because people will come and, 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 and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I no longer sin. Your your response is the response that I get from everybody. What do you mean you know you don't sin? So you're telling me that you're perfect? I said that? No. I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> I might have said that. <laughs> I was direct sometimes. You're you know? like but, but other people tell me, so you're telling me that you're perfect, that you don't sin, that you don't have any bad thoughts, that you don't have any of this thing. No, you're telling me that you're already in your glorified body. Why are they arguing with me? Yeah. Are they arguing with me? No. They're arguing because they can't accept that they can't stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Because of their belief system. They're in a comfort zone. They're in a, they're in a place... Uh, that they just can't comprehend my place. Yeah. So if you're outside a door, you will never be able to understand what's in being inside of the building. Right. So I'm inside of the kingdom. And I'm telling you, hey, there is joy. There is peace. Right. There is love. There mm -hmm. is self-control. There is all this stuff. Look, I'm experiencing it. I, I am perfect. Why? Because my father said, be perfect like I am perfect. Be holy like I am holy. Just receive it. Just believe it. And I believe it. Now you're telling me, now you're angry at me because I believe it, but you don't. Right. And you're telling me, no, it's impossible, brother. It's impossible. I'm like, yes, it is possible. I believe it. I don't have a conflict with it. I don't wrestle it. I just let it be. When, when um, I was reading in the Bible, uh, and I, I kind of talked a little bit about that through my family and other people. Um, when, when Jesus died and he got crucified, and I, I don't know if this is, makes sense, but this is what I, I'm, I'm gathering right now in my thoughts. When Jesus got crucified, there was, a, a, and he died, there was a big earthquake. Mm -hmm. And there was a carpet between the holy and the yeah. holies of holy places. The veil. The veil. And the, when Jesus died, that veil ripped. Yeah, from top to bottom. From top to bottom, which means now we have the essence. Access. The access to the Lord that we didn't before. Right. What happens sometimes in a religious mindset, that we don't know that that, axe, that veil has already been ripped yeah. open to go into the presence of God to inherit all these gifts to inherit to take advantage of all these things so sometimes we're still strapped in the holy place but not the holies of holies where we can experience what God has for us yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean the only thing that um, I was going to say um, kind of the other side of things that I'm also seeing but um, there's this Bible verse and I was trying to find it, but I couldn't find it. Um, but you guys probably know it. Um, what's the Bible verse say that says, um, you think you're looking for truth, but... Yeah, that's in Matthew 13 with the parable. Okay, and, and what does it say? It's, that's what it says. They looked and looking for truth, but they're not. Right? Somebody let's look for it. Yeah, I was trying to find that. I knew it was in Matthew, but... Oh, Matthew 16. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was one chapter away. Give in and see... something about them saying Maybe. you have to get this down right away bro I know well just say what you're gonna say because yeah just say it because I know <laughs> time was of an essence yeah so um Okay, I mean, so so it was along um, the, those lines, and I wish that we can find it. But 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 basically, people say that they're looking for truth, and they put this uh, aspect of yeah, I, I want the God. But then when they get presented to okay, if you're looking for it, here it is. Then their their actual motivation sticks out. It's like 
Oh yeah, I was just saying that yeah. I wanted to change but, the day. But now that you presented the solution, yeah, and, and, I don't want and, to change And that's the thing, people think that they're looking for the truth, but in reality they're not. Right. So they're telling me, hey, you know what, I want to have a peace, uh, a life of joy and peace. Okay, here's the kingdom. Right. Oh no, 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 yeah. that's, not, that's not what I want. Right. I'm like, I thought you wanted peace, okay. so here's the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I thought you wanted a better relationship with your wife, here's the kingdom. Right. I thought you wanted a better relationship with your kids, here's the kingdom. I thought right. you wanted a better relationship with God, here's the kingdom. No, 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 it's like now that you've given them yeah. what they're supposedly looking for, it, when you present it to them, it gets revealed that they weren't really looking for it anyway. Right. It was just a lie. Yeah. That was a uh, not a parable, but um, one of the prophets was presented from a king that had leprosy. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And he came to, uh, who was it? Uh, the prophet. He came and said, you want to be healed? I want you to go to the Jordan rivers yeah. and submerge yourself oh, seven, times. seven times. But I heard a preaching from my past, uh, pastor, mm -hmm. senior pastor, and he said the, 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 that Jordan river was a filthy yes. place to go compared to the to river he came from. To the river that he came from. And if he wanted healing, there was cost uh, to it. So whether the king that had the leprosy needed to submit right. to what he said, going against your own will, or do you want to go back to your old condition right. in, a, in a beautiful sea? So the king himself said, I got to do this. There's a right. price to pay. And that's one thing that we have. We don't want to pay a price. Right. We don't want to pay to, to make ourselves better. Jesus already pay paid the price. What price do I have to pay? There's nothing I can give. Right. Right. That's not right. And then yeah. even another story too, like um, we see with the, with the young rich guy that he goes to Jesus and he's like, oh my God, Jesus, I want to follow you. Like, what do I have to do to follow you? And Jesus is like, okay, if you really want to follow me, sell everything you own and just follow me. So when he got pre 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 uh, me presented, it says that there was sorrow in his heart that he was saddened because he didn't want to leave what he had. And I think that so many people nowadays where they say, like, like you said, um, I want peace in my life. I want order. Um, I want to be fruitful. Um, I want to stop sinning. I want to stop doing all these things. And then the kingdom says, okay, this is what you have to do. And they're like, oh, actually, no, I'm actually good. Like, like yeah. I don't really want it. I mean, time is uh, always uh, on our, uh, not on our side. So I'm going to read this Bible verse, and it's the one that you were talking about so that we can end it there, because this really sums up everything. Yeah. Because it is complicated, and it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. And Jesus put it in these terms. And this is in Matthew 13, verse 13. It says, that's why I teach the people using parables. The kingdom is a parable. Mm -hmm. Because the kingdom is not meant to be found by people that are casual. Right. By people that don't want to sacrifice, by people that don't want to pay the price, by people that don't want to seek. So Jesus says, that's why I teach people using parables, because they think they're looking for the truth. Yet, because their hearts are unteachable, they never discover it. Although they will listen to me, they will never fully perceive the message I speak. Yes, awesome. and, and that's what we're saying, it's complicated because... Everything that the people are looking for is found inside the kingdom of God. Not inside Christianity, not inside a religion, not inside of any of the things that they're doing. It's inside of the kingdom. And if, and if people will come into the kingdom of God, everything that they're looking for, will, they would have access to it without any problem. They would, they would be operating out of the overflow instead of operating uh, from a place of just being drained that I'm just serving through the motions. I have to come to service. Uh, I don't even know nothing about the word, but I got to come and play in the music department. I have to be an usher. I have to be in the kids ministry. Uh, um, but I feel semi-satisfied because I'm serving the Lord and just to find out that I wasn't doing nothing for him anyway. Yeah. So, you know, uh, like I said, time is up, it's over. Uh, we are honored that you guys took the time to be able to join us here with us and just to be able to uh, tune in to this discussion. Like I said, necessarily we're not trying to teach, we're just trying to have a discussion yeah. uh, and, and just kind of put ourselves out there. If you guys resonate or any of these things resonates with you guys, uh, send us a message. You guys, you guys don't have a church where you congregate. Uh, send us a DM uh, so that we can give you information about House 633. Uh, if you if you have had enough of religion and you want to know what's next, what's after religion, the only thing after this is the kingdom. So uh, if you want to know what the kingdom is and you want to seek after it because you're tired of religion, you have really hit a wall, there's no more growth, no more development, no more nothing. So the kingdom is the only thing that can give it to you now. So if, 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 you're, if, if you really want it, DM us. Yes. Reach out to us. You know, my brother Noah, Andy, myself, 
uh, I, sometimes people, because I, I'm, I'm the pastor here, they, they have a hard time sometimes, you know, you know, reaching out to me. But I'm available. You know, I'm, I'm not like your regular pastor that, that, that does not reach back. I do reach right. back to people uh, if they reach out to me. And I know these guys will definitely do it. Uh, but we definitely want to be able to uh, extend the kingdom in your life so that whatever it is that you're missing or lacking, uh, you will be able to have access to. But you have to also understand that the kingdom comes with responsibility and, and the responsibility will lie on you yes. to be able to make the decisions and, and be able to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and believe his message. Because if you don't believe in it, then you won't be able to access the kingdom anyway. Uh, for all of those uh, also that want to be able to sow into House 633, you guys can do it through Zelle at honorseed at house633.com. Uh, we do not give to God out of manipulation. We cannot manipulate God right. in anything. We cannot twist God's heart for anything. We give to the kingdom because we believe that the kingdom needs to be preached and we believe that the kingdom needs yeah. to be extended. Yeah. But at the same time, the Bible says that even though you sow into the kingdom, when you sow, you will be able to reap at, a, at 30, 60, or even 100% as much as it was sown into. So, That's even, good return so, investment. so it's a good return in your investment. The kingdom is the best thing that you can yeah. invest in. So, so uh, say bye, guys, and, you know, we'll just uh, leave it there. Brothers and sisters, thank you for tuning in. Sorry. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, thank you for tuning in. And uh, two things that I can leave with you is, one is uh, the kingdom has to be seeked. He cannot just, he's not going to come to you. You have to seek it, it out. in order for you to get that return on investment. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. God bless you guys. Uh, we really appreciate the people that have sent messages or reached out. Um, keep reaching out. Um, like my pastor said, if that resonated with you guys, if it's even challenged you guys, reach out. Don't waste time. Don't be shy about it. Um, we won't reach out to you. You need to reach out to us because the kingdom has to be sought. But yeah, we love you guys. We thank you and we appreciate everybody that takes their time and joins us. To the king. To the king.